Okay, this looks good. All right, let's go. Somehow ETTR, um, exposing to the right or overexposing an image and bringing it down in post has kind of become a hot topic on the internet as everything tends to become a hot topic on the internet. Um, so I wanted to test that theory. I think a lot of people have problems with how it's implemented and with the intention part of it, which I'm not gonna talk about today. I wanna focus on the practical stuff, you know, how we can use that and does it really make a difference in the whole thing. So let's go. The thing is overexposing or, you know, exposing to the right, and then bringing it down in the pose to get cleaner shadows and you know a cleaner image with less noise is not a bad thing. It, it just has its place. It's true, like as DPs, our job is to make something look cool and good, but ETTR is just a technique and it's not like, you know, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it doesn't break the image or it doesn't make the image better. It's just a technique to get less noise, especially for compressed formats like um, YouTube, Instagram or social media or web stuff in general so it's not a bad thing it just has its place and it's a technique and first of all we are going to understand what ettr is what correct exposure is and then i'm going to test everything and here are timestamps so you can jump around if you want um, okay ETTR is basically exposing the image as bright as possible without clipping and then bringing it down in post to get cleaner shadows, cleaner image, more detail in your shadows. It has a lot of asterisks to it, which I'm going to get to, but this is basically the explanation of it. Now there are two types of correct exposure. One is a technical correct exposure and the second is a creative correct exposure. First of all, creative correct exposure doesn't actually exist. It just is based on the look, based on what you're filming, based on the story. It might be too bright and it would still be the correct exposure. It might be a little too dark and you know, a lot of stuff are crushed, but it still would be the correct exposure. It just depends on DP, it just depends on the director, depends on the picture, it depends on a lot of the creative stuff. So creative correct exposure does not really exist. Lights changing, damn it. Technical correct exposure does technically exist though. And if we were to take an example from Sony, which I'm using the FX30 right now, Sony says for the FX30 for S-Log3, the correct exposure is middle gray, 18% middle gray at 41 IRE, that one. So the correct exposure is when we set that middle gray, that one, to 41 IRE exactly. Now, as an example, this image that you're seeing right now is not correctly, technically correctly exposed. Technically correct exposure would be this, but I'm using a more stylized look. It's not where I am, you know, normally the thing would be here and I would then set correctly my exposure. So there are a lot more, a lot of like little details to it, but you know, this is the creative correct exposure that I'm going for. <laughs> It is basically because when you overexpose the image, again, a lot of asterisks I'm gonna to get to, and then bring it down in the post-production, you get less noise in your shadows and you get more details in your shadows. You can still bring them down even more, but you still get less noise in your shadows, which you know is a really great thing. Then you don't get those weird artifacting in social media and it gives you more flexibility in post. But it is also the same reason, the more flexibility in post that a lot of DPs are not really into this whole thing because you know a colorist can come in and you know watch everything that you worked so hard for but i'm going to give you another example there like last week like four days ago say sunday five days ago on tuesday i was on a shoot and then we used ettr like we correctly exposed everything and then we removed the nd filter on the c500 and pretty great mark two was was it mark two or mark one i'm not sure but you know ettr does get used in the industry too so it's not like at least in the parts that I've been a part of, you know? I'm not gonna be like, oh, everyone uses that. I don't know if Greg Fraser uses it. <laughs> but there's a lot of asterisks, asterisks to this thing. Um, number one would be, when we're talking about cinema cameras, when they have like dual native base ISOs, different ISO levels have different sensitivities to light. So I believe this is in Venice, Sony Venice 2. I might be wrong, I might add some screenshots to this. For example, in Venice 2, in the base ISO of 800, you are getting seven or like 
seven stops and highlight seven stops and shadows and then in the high base iso you're getting eight stops of highlights and then six stops of shadows so when you change the iso your highlight retention or shadow retention does change so ettr in this range has to be used a bit more intentional so i guess that comes back to the intention point like if you if you don't know what you're doing and you're just going to raise it up and then you know weird stuff might happen so keep that in mind that is i don't think that is the same thing with the fx30 or fx3 i might be wrong if i'm wrong i'm adding this right now there's also the question of always the asterisk and the question of yeah but 1600 is a lot more noisier than 800 so if i bring it down will, will i still get less noise and in the experiment you're going to see that you actually do get less noise and with that being said i'm not going to babble on a lot more and then we're going to get to the experiments now okay so i have done two different experiments and one is going to be a basic color checker test and this was all done in a you know and most scientific way that I could do it. And you know, it was at night, I could control the lights and everything. So it was done there. And the second one is I set up a quick scene um, in the same night, and then we're just gonna take a look at that. And we're gonna do also two tests. One is going to be a basic test of 800 versus 2500 brought down. And then, you know, we can take a look at that. I'm using 800 and 2500 because those are the base ISOs of the FX30, but this can, you know, apply to any camera at any point. And the second test is going to be a bit more detailed test and specific to FX30 and with how the flexible ISO works, does it really make a difference to Cine EI or is it just like a gimmick? Which I don't think it's a gimmick. Like I've, I don't know, I've researched it and they say there's a bit more dynamic range to the Cine EI. Again, I'm gonna talk about it in that point. So let's take a look at the first test. All right, so we're starting with the 800 ISO uh, correct exposure. And as you can see, this image is not dirty at all. It's like, this is not a noisy image. If I were to zoom in like 400%, yes, I could see a little bit of noise, but again, not distracting at all. If I were to go to 2500, the second base ISO of the FX30, now I'm seeing a bit more noise, but again, I wouldn't say this image is a dirty or unusable at all. Like this is a very fine structure, very cool, uh, very pleasing to my eye structure. Now there is a little bit of this like color botching happening in the shadow areas that you can see, especially around the... Um, real black areas. I don't really quite like it, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it doesn't distract or anything, but you know, it is something to keep in mind. If I were to go to 800 again, before I pull it down so we can take a look at it. Right now, you are seeing a 200% zoomed in image, and this is pulled 2,500. I pulled it down to 800, and you can clearly see a difference. ISO. If I were to zoom in a little bit, you can see there's a bit of noise, but like very normal noise, not bad at all. Like it's a clean image. If I were to push it up to 2500 ISO, you do see a bit of difference in the noise. There's a bit more noise. Again, not a dirty image. I think the 2500 ISO is pretty nice as a structure. So you're getting a pretty good look. Now let's go back to the 800 again before the difference. So this is the whole image, not zoomed in or anything. And I'm pulling it down. And even right now you can see, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on YouTube, but you do get a cleaner image. And if we were to zoom in like 400%, again, this is 800, this is 2,500 pulled down. There is a difference, especially the color botching happens less, which I think is the um, biggest plus of this. If we were to take a look at a cool example of grain versus noise, this is this is pretty interesting because like this is EI 800 with added grain, and this is EI 800 pushed. There are some different stuff happening here, which I want to analyze quickly. 
um, as you can see, these shadows are um, darker. They have both the um, same look on them. So the shadows are a little bit darker, but we can very easily fix that with a node. So that should not be a problem. I do very much like the structure of the noise. So I don't think that's bad at all. The one thing that drives me nuts, which makes me makes this i'm not gonna say unusable but i would kind of hesitate using this if we were to take a look at the color chart here you can obviously see the color botching that's happening i'm not saying this is a good way to you know use noise again this is, this is a very much creative choice i think but i don't think this is an unusable result i do think in a pinch it could be used as a noise as a, as a grain substitute i would like to try one video doing this maybe like a spec ad or something so i don't think it's bad at all i really don't hate it except the color botching color botching really does bother me a lot actually right now like the sun is changing all the time if i expose this image correctly and when the sun was shining and when sun's go sun's gone i can still you know i still don't i don't clip i don't lose any shadows or anything like that but if i were to expose this image right now when the sun is gone and then i would get you know sunlight i might be clipping so there is stuff to be careful about but you know one technique isn't better than the other they're just techniques and they should be used accordingly they're just you know tools to make something happen and doing it with intention is always the key like it, it's it's also like not a magic solution to shooting at anything so you know be careful do your own tests it's very important to do your own tests with your own camera with your own lenses and stuff like that so this is just meant to be a guide for a lot of people if you expose correctly for 800 and then you go up to 2500 and then you know bring it down in post you still get less noise in your shadows that's something to take care uh, to think about i actually don't think one stop pushed look is a bad look i don't think it's a substitute for grain because noise and grain are different i've talked about this in another video you can check that out too there is this luma noise chroma noise thing and the color botching thing i personally love luma noise but i don't really like chroma noise there is a bit of both in this which i don't i don't find particularly bad it's just that the color botching that happens in the sh shadowy areas i just something that i don't really find good or soothing it's just also like a, a creative thought because like they shot the uh, bob dylan movie at like 12 1800 ISO with like F uh, T4, T5, 6 lenses. And then, you know, to get that 
um, grain like noise structure. Could you do it with the FX30? I think to a point you can. Again, even 10 bit 42 is like great, but it still has its limitations. And you do see that happen sometimes. But with that being said, I will shoot a video, probably a spec add to. I want to shoot it at like higher ISOs or like pushing it up to see how that, you know, could actually work. But again, going back to the conclusions, it's not a great um, replacement, but it could be used as some texture. I don't hate it. Um, flexible ISO doesn't really make much of a difference in controlled scenes than the Cine EI modes. I do like Cine EI because of the you know ease of using it, but flexible ISO isn't bad. I am in a lucky position that I have enough lights that I can pump up the lights and I don't have to pump up my ISO, which is a pretty cool thing. Other than that, um, let's take a look at my notes here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. One thing that's important, again, do it with intention and no way is right. There's no right or wrong in this. You know, you just depend. It just depends on the camera. It depends on the situation. So do your own tests and be intentional about it, which is pretty cool. Um, okay. Other than that, I want to show you this. This is my <laughs> very janky focus um, station, which again, I don't have a wireless system. So I'm using my phone uh, with the Sony app and I hope I've been in focus. I'm shooting a T2.8 with a mystery lens, which no one has been able to guess. I'm, I'm, I'm sad about that. You know, check out the other video and guess that. Um, and I just like, I have the Nucleus Nano 1. I bought it like for a crazy price. And then I um, taped it to a rod. Like I have a rod holder, holder. And I taped the rod to a side handle. And you know, this is the, this is the phone with a phone holder. It works pretty great. I'm not going to lie. It works like... It's pretty great. Wireless systems are great. Wireless focusing is also great. I hope I didn't miss focus, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, so this is a test shot of how the scene is going to look.